This is Antitude. And this looks weird, doesn't it? <laughs> I just I just thought about that when I set up to make the video. So let me let me take that off. I'll tell you what I was doing here. Um, put that aside. Uh, this video, I'm going to show you how to take out the uh, switch selector knobs that are attached to this cam, um, cam selector arm shaft that runs from the knob and out the back of the machine. And with it, we're going to remove uh, the followers. And uh, when, when you start that process, one of the things you do is, is uh, loosen these two little screws and, and you know, you take this front knob off. And um, it, it kind of looks loose here, doesn't it? But these screws uh, were too tight for me to take off. Huh. And it's the first time I've ever had that, which is a coincidence because a couple weeks ago, a viewer contacted me that uh, she couldn't get one of these screws off. And what should she do? And I said, "Wow, I've never, I've never had that." So you know, I said, "Put some penetrating oil, let it soak, and uh, you know, uh, if that doesn't do it, you could warm it up with a hair dryer, etc." So it was funny, uh, yesterday evening I, I went to start on this a little bit, take a look at stuff, and I couldn't get either screw to budge. So that's why I hung this uh, used glove on there, was to catch the drippings. And uh, I, I went in here, i show you this from the, from the side. Um, of course, yours probably isn't loose, but there's a little gap back here between the two knobs. And you can kind of spray down in there with penetrating oil, okay? And of course, it'll it'll just drip all over everywhere. So that's why I, I hung the glove on there. But I did that uh, uh, two or three times in the evening and before bedtime. And uh, I'm going to see if they're loose enough now to take off. And if not, I'll get out the, the hair dryer. But uh, I didn't see any rust on them. They were dirty. But I didn't see any rust. If you have rust, you're going to want to treat them with a rust remover first before you put any penetrating oil. Because the my experience, the like my rust remover, it won't work at all if there's already if you already oiled or greased something. You know, <laughs> it doesn't do anything with the grease. So. Um, now, it, Singer said, in your service guides and stuff, the first thing you do is uh, take off the special disc, if you have one, and they say to remove the cam stack. Okay? And that makes it easier to get the followers off when you get to that point. And if you watch my, my last video, I showed you how to take this out and everything like that. And um, I'm going to try and do this without removing the cam stack. Um, I think I've done it that way before. It's, it's a little trickier and stuff. And maybe it's making a mistake because, you know, I could lift this out. And then when I'm done, put it back in and retime it. But I got it timed nice and stuff. And I just thought, well, maybe we can do this. Because I, I know some of my viewers are hesitant to uh, mess around with the cam stack from what they're telling me so but uh, if you would like to to have a little more room and an easier time you know you you take off this stud up here with your screwdriver and it, it comes off with a little washer and tri spring and then you can lift the whole cam stack out just like in that video so I'll leave that up to you but let's see if we cannot get these uh, screws loose because after you take out the cam stack, if you do, this is where you start with this. So uh, when, when you turn this, hold on to the knob because it's, it's got the, 
like the index pin, I think they call it. And parts move back here, and if you force stuff, I don't want you bending anything. Hold on so the knob doesn't turn. And uh, there we go. Good. I was worried I was going to strip the screw last night. So I just quit and said, hey, that's what my WD-40 is for. Now, uh, the other thing I didn't mention, and I should have, if you're going to do this, uh, please, 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 take pictures of the lifters and the uh, followers in the front and the back from two or three different angles. And take, take some shots of the, of the shaft, the cam selector arm shaft here. Um, so that when you go to put stuff back together, you know, you won't say, where does the screw go, or wait, does this go this way or that way? So, in my experience, especially if you're kind of new at this, please take pictures with your cell phone or a little camera or something. Or you'll be sorry. So, take this screw out now. I'll show it to you. It's uh, two of those. It's a little bugle head steel screw. Mm -hmm. So though, that's obviously why not why it was loose. Uh, you know these didn't need to be tightened up to, to whoops to make this uh, knob tight. This, these front screws they were so tight. I, I couldn't get them off but there's behind here is a spring and this uh, bracket that's that's part of this index finger over here and that's held to the shaft with a screw and that can get loose from all the pulling and pushing and stuff like that and that's usually why you have a wobbly knob like that and it's usually the front one that's kind of weird like that. The back one, that doesn't happen to very much. Okay, there's the other one. Now we just pull this knob off and you can see some of my WD-40 left in there and, and that's just that screws right onto this bracket and the bracket has one screw that screws into the arm shaft and part of that bracket sneaks through this back knob and comes over here on the left for your A to J index pin okay and let's see is that gonna, I guess gonna show up well as I thought it would be this screw that, that screws on the bracket is loose. So that's what need would need tightening. Wow, it's very loose. Okay. So now now nothing is wobbling. So that's all that was. If 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 you have that and you want to fix it, just take out the two front screws and tighten this guy up. Okay? Okay, then, then the next uh, step here is to take that screw out <laughs> and remove this bracket and um, indicator. And of course you, you want to uh, keep your parts together, so you're only going to take out about uh, one, two, three, four, five screws here. And they're all a little bit different except the two bugle head screws. But this screw that holds the shaft on is just what I call a, a flat pan head. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what's holding the bracket onto the indicate uh, onto the shaft. Okay. So now there's a spring around the shaft behind this bracket. 
So this will just lift right off. When you do, the spring can kind of pop out. So if we move that bracket to the side a little bit, we'll just pull out the knob spring. Okay. And then to get this um, bracket and indicator off, you you got to kind of uh, manipulate it so that the end of the index comes out of the slot here. And I usually just kind of turn it up and start uh, wiggling it around and turning it and getting it out. Okay. Steel, dirty, then to, to put it back in you just kind of do the same same way, put it, manipulate it through the, there's a, there's a big cutout here, like a half moon cutout on that side, and you just get it in there and manipulate it around and tuck the point back into the slot, and of course you put your spring back on and set this down. And tighten it with the screw. So um, there, there's a hole right in the shaft for the screw. Okay. Now, um, when I talked about the the shaft up here, I showed you that, and, and the directions talk about the cam selector arm shaft and the followers. And I, I think I showed you followers in the other video. Let me show you the rear follower here. It sits on this, uh, you know, the, the front and rear followers sit on those posts. Uh, remember that they, they, they slide up and down on. And the posts have these little slots cut in, right? And the, the follower has a little arm or finger that that goes in through a slot of the follower and into one of those slots on the pin and that's what locks it in place. So when you pull back against the spring and turn it you, you get the setting you want on the dial and then you let it release it and make sure the spring pushes it in and then you're good. Okay. So this is um, the actual follower, right? The little two points on the follower that follow along the cam, and uh, it's got um, this is in the back now, right? And this is the lifter. This is what the rear lifter looks like, something like this. So the shaft is going to go through there, you'll see in a moment, and it's screwed with a set screw into the shaft. And it's got this little kind of floating finger. See how that's just on a swivel stud or a hinge stud right there? And uh, that little finger is what goes in the slot of the follower like so and it goes into the post slot and that's what locks it so when you push your pull on those knobs it moves that finger away from the post enough so that when you turn it it can it can go up and down the post when you release it that little floating finger goes back into the follower and locks into the post okay so and that's why that's that's why that is a uh, let's see i think it goes in the front like that yeah so that's that's why this is a a hinge stud that holds that little finger so that when you turn the shaft it's raising the lifter and that's moving the follower up to the position you want so lifter 
with the locking or floating finger that's my name for it and a follower and there's something very similar to this in the front I just happen to have this this set from a 500A to, to show you okay so we got that um, part done in the front now we got to go free up the other end of the shaft which is this uh, screw back here this is a, a flat pan head it screws right into the end of the shaft where the shaft comes out of the bushing in the body so we'll just take that off now when when you turn this I want you to put your thumb up there on that lifter because I, I don't want you turning this whole thing and it starts moving up the lifter and the follower and bends the follower fin finger because it might be on there pretty hard so when you're untightening it everything's going to want to go down when you're installing it everything's going to want to rise up so you just just put your thumb up in there and don't let that move up if you're all the way down it's not going to move down <clears throat> there we go so this is one of those um, screws where the, the the length is small but the head is uh, big nice cute little guy so that's your shaft screw screws right into the end there okay so now we got all of that let's see the next step is we've got to take out the set screw that holds the rear lifter to the cam selector arm shaft screws right into the top which is a little funny because in the original um, uh, service manual when you put it back on it just says tighten that screw against the, sh uh, the shaft but actually there is a hole there's a flat spot on one side of the shaft and there's the threading hole goes right through the shaft so um, I don't know if the first version of this just had a smooth shaft and you tighten the screw against the shaft but I want to show you that um, set screw because it has like a little rounded point on the end or a little nipple on the end that goes in the hole on the shaft Okay, so now let me block this up. Maybe we can get a pretty good, get it closer here and see if we can get a better view. Mm -hmm. If I turn it like that, yeah. how's that? So what you do now is you just grab the shaft and start twisting and pulling you got the screw off the back and you got the lifter unscrewed and uh, it's hesitant because it's dirty it's got it's gonna have a lot of dried gunk on it once you get it past the lifter back here you can take the lifter out see and that's just like the one I just showed you and that's why you want to take pictures of all this stuff because when when you put it back in I'll tell you there's a mistake a lot of people make with this one when they put it in so and I'll and I'll explain it later but you want to be sure and take pictures of stuff you know before you tear it all apart okay so there's the rear lifter and keep taking this shaft out so I can show you that okay here's that dirty old shaft so this is the end in the back where, where you put you remove that screw okay and here's the flat spot I was telling you about right here it's a little flat spot so that goes up and there's the other side but the flat spot goes up up at the front 
of the shaft there's just a threaded hole straight through no flat spot so when when you put it back in you want that flat spot up okay so there's that nasty little thing and then uh, you see we can take out this front lifter now and uh, actually the whole knob should come right with it just lift that knob up and away this is all together now see it's screwed in the back if you want to take that apart it's got three screws to hold the uh, bracket to the rear knob and it's got a screw to hold this uh, index pin from the right side on. Okay. This just sits right in there and the shaft going through is what holds it in place. Okay. So you can lift that right out. Look how easy this is. You're just itching to do it, aren't you? Hey. What a great project. Okay. So now let's talk about um, removing the two followers. Now this is where it would be easier if you had taken the cam stack out. Um, move, the, move the paddle back away from the follower to get it off the disc. Whoop, and then just slide it up. So there's the front follower right there. Look at that. Piece of cake. And look how grungy it is. And, ooh, it's all nasty inside. So no wonder it's all sticky when you're trying to turn it. Turn the knob, right? Okay, we can take care of that. So the last thing, as I started to say, to take off was this rear follower back here. And if we just uh, pull back that uh, driving arm to so it's not pinching it against the cam stack we can just lift that up and take it off okay now let's let's see what happens if if I just let that go now we're gonna see what happens to that spring right there oh good okay it didn't come off yay so we have everything off now and if you did take your cam stack off and want to clean, or you want to clean these, I call them posts. They might be called um, index pins. I'm not sure. I'd have to look that up. But if you wanted to do any other work, or if you wanted to take off your vibrating bracket, I have videos about that. Um, so, I'm just going to clean the parts, and then I'll show you the sequence for putting it all back together. Okay. Okay, when we go to put it back together, then we start with that rear follower. And we put it back on here. And let's pull that driving arm away. And see if we can't There we go. So you have to get that double headed pointer down in there some. I'll just put it about there for now. Okay. Then we'll come back to the front here and we'll put the front follower on. They clean up nice, don't they? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to do the, the same thing. Uh, see, if I move this width lever over towards one, I have a little more space to move that paddle away for putting this follower on. See? Get it down there onto the cam stack somewhere. Then I'll just move this back to the center. So now I have my two followers, front and rear, back on. 
The next step is to put the rear knob back on and of course I have the front lifter is screwed to it with those three screws and the right uh, indicator or index pin will go in the slot but we need to get the little lifter finger thing into the slot at the base of the follower okay so I might I might try and get that part started in there first there so I have the I have the finger in there now this this uh, right angle piece that comes off here goes behind the upright post on the follower then trying to keep that in there I'm going to move this down and to the right to drop it in place and try and get that pin someplace in the slot here I don't care where it goes in there I just want it in the slot okay and there it is Whee! all right our next step is to put in the cam selector arm shaft put it back in and we're going to uh, this end with the hole at the very end of the cylindrical no flat spots stays in the front and this end that tapers down with the hole for the lifter arm and the flat spot up we'll stick it right through here Maneuver it through the bra uh, brace and bushing under the driving bar arm. I probably should have put a little oil on this to make it easier. <laughs> and stop right there because I, I have to put the rear lifter. Whoop, I have to put the rear lifter in there. And uh, I want to be sure you, 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 you get this in right. It's going to sit, sit like that with the shaft going right through the center. And it's going to end up with the hole right over the flat spot. But this is an error sometimes made here where this gets uh, put on wrong. It has to extend like that. But it's common that it gets folded back the other way and the finger is down here below the bracket and it will fit and sometimes it's even easier to put in like this but it doesn't lift the follower up high enough you won't be able to use all of your cam stack so we want to be sure that that is is uh, straight out not folded back okay and we have the same thing we had to do in the front there we have to get the uh, finger into the slot here of the follower See if I can yeah I'm gonna have to Pull that back a little bit. I wonder if I can put that in. Yeah, let me put the width into five. The stitch width leather into five. Move the driving arm away. Now I have a little more room in here next to the paddle. I can lift this up a little bit higher so that I can get that finger into the slot. Come on, slot, where are you? That that uh, hinge screw that holds that finger is really clean now and it's really wobbly. Oh, I had it in and there, whoops, there, okay. 
So I've got the finger in the slot. Hope you can. Oops, it came out again. Burn it. There. That'll help. I had to get the jog over the upright post here. Okay. Now let's see if we can put that bracket down in the area. It'll go down that far and we can get the arm shaft in there even though it's at a little bit of an angle right now. for a second to hold it there okay <laughs> if we want to get this upright we need to lower our follower down a little bit so I'll just pull the the driving arm back a little bit to get uh, pressure off of there and just drop the follower put it back on three to stitch with just make sure my follower there now I can turn it the shaft so my flat spot and hole are facing up and slide it the rest of the way through until it comes out the end here actually I'm going to slide it until the two holes line up that would be better I want to get through there There we go. How did I do that? I think I just held this bracket, kind of supported it stationary while I while I moved the uh, shaft in and out. My screwdriver here and. Make sure I'm in that hole, not on the side of the shaft. We'll do a final tightening later. Yeah, darn. I see my finger slipped out of the follower. Mm -mm -mm. Gee, and I worked so hard to get that in there. What if I... Can I pull my follower up? Or is it wedged in there too hard? See if I can. I hate to take that screw back out. I just got it in there. So maybe I can lift this up a little. Get my finger pointed in there again. It's a tricky little uh, gizmo. It's quite fascinating the way they designed it. There. See, I don't have a spring in the front. pushing this forward. So when I push the shaft back it pulled the finger right out. Let's uh, I put that back in three and push it away and try and turn that. It's still kind of wedged in there darn. Mm-hmm. I'm going to leave it there. At least it's together until I can get this uh, front parts back on here, I think. Let's do that. So we work on this uh, front end here and the two knobs. You see my shaft is turned a little bit, so my hole is a little bit of an angle, not straight down. But I'm going to put my uh, shaft spring on there. 
and I'm going to hold the shaft, put my finger back here, and hold the shaft in. So when I when I push on stuff, it doesn't slide out, slide backwards. Okay. Then I will take my left indicator and the bracket. It's a busy little bracket because it holds the left indicator pointer. It pushes back the spring and holds it in place. And it tightens to the hole in the shaft. And then the, the uh, beige button, the, the front knob, screws into it. <laughs> Nice multi-purpose part here. And get that up in there. And I want to get the angle of it in the slot. Okay, I'll hold my shaft back here in the back. Because I'm going to use that bracket now to push the spring back I think whoop I gotta get the spring back behind it a little bit yeah hmm. okay if I can keep that push the spring back with my finger on the right hand and get that bracket in front of the spring. Can I do that? Yeah, okay. And then use the spring. I mean use the bracket. We Use the bracket to push the spring back. It's not working that well. Hmm. Because I, I don't think I want to put the screw in through the spring coils. I'm not going to have enough uh, springing motion, I don't think. There. Okay. My tip is in. I just had to push that spring farther back with my thumb to slide the bracket on in front of it. Now, where is my hole for the screw? Don't push that shaft out the back end. <laughs> there it is. And here's the screw. Let's see if I can get it. I just want to get a couple of threads started on it. Just so it will hold on there and I don't have to keep worrying about that uh, spring pushing it off, right? Hmm. Trying to look at the screw back here angle to get the angle up here. I wish I could, oh there, I think I just, by pushing on it and turning, pushing on the screw and wiggling the bracket, I felt the screw kind of pop into the hole a little bit. Oh boy. Did it stay in there? Doesn't feel like it's threading in properly. Try the others. Yeah, here, I had the wrong screwdriver. So I'm just going to backtrack it a little bit while pushing the screw down, see if I can get the threads to seat. There they go. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that all up. This was the loose that made the front knob wobbly. There we go. Oof. Okay. And my 
indicator still in the slot. Yay! Okay, let's go back here because now that I've got this all in, I can put the uh, shaft end screw back in place. Right? The little short uh, silver screw that, that goes right into the end of the shaft. And I'm going to tighten that firm. Looks good. So I want to see if this is going to work okay now. So I don't have the knob on the front end up here. I'm just going to push on the bracket and try turning the bracket. There we go. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's turn around here to the front. And I'll pull this out and see if this front um, follower will go up and down. Right there. Oops, put this back in the three position. There we go. was kind of caught up above. I put it all the way up in special so it's it's expecting to see that plastic special disc so the follower pin jumped on top of cam 7 and when I was trying to lower it I didn't pull the knob out enough. So if I pull it out completely then I can turn it down. It's so much smoother even though I haven't even oiled it yet. Yeah, and look, remember before this this uh, indicator was would go up about halfway between A and B or even just to B. Now it goes all the way up to A. Yay. I take these gloves off and I just need to put the front knob back on now with the two two little um bugle head screws and I think we'll have a successful completion metal okay I don't I don't think there's any up or down I'll just try putting the right one on. Whoop, slipped right off, didn't it? Try putting the right one on first. Here, I'll finger tighten them. That'll work. I don't need my little spring screwdriver for that. Now, of course, normally I would, uh, you know, since I got full movement and everything, now I would go in and I would oil the oil spots as shown in the manual. And I, I showed you the most important ones uh, in the earlier video I did about when these knobs are stuck. 
where to where to put oil and stuff to to get stuff moving again. If I push it back all the way back, I can rotate it up and down. And if I pull the back knob all the way forward, let's see if we can. I can turn this one. This this grabs a little bit. You know, I th I think this needs adjusting. I think this uh, is too close to the cam stack. Because it seems like even when I push out, it pushes the follower against the paddle. But it seems like it, it's really kind of dragging. Maybe, well look, now it's nice and smooth. Maybe after I oil everything up, it'll be good. I couldn't get this full movement of the shaft even after I un, um, got it moving again. But after cleaning this... And I cleaned out the little bushings, you know. I just put some crud cutter on a Q-tip and went in there and swabbed them out and stuff. And I haven't even oiled it, and things are moving better. So, I'm going to say I'm a success. Hmm. And you can be too. If you would like, if you're having problems, and you really want to uh, clean those uh, lifters and the shaft and the followers and get all that muck out of there and um, you can see I had to fool around putting the followers in so if you'd like to remove that stud and spring and just lift the camp stack out you'll have a lot more room in there to navigate and to clean and so forth And as I said in the camp stack video, I show how to do that. It's very easy. Okay. Or you could do the whole thing at once. You could take out the camp stack and the lifters and the shaft and everything. You know, it's up to you. I just want to give you an idea of how all that stuff works. And how to take it out and, and put it back in. And when I say I clean these parts, I just sprayed them down with about a 25% solution of crud cutter. The uh, knobs I rinsed right away so the crud cutter wouldn't dull the paint. And then uh, a couple of those followers I had to scrub a little with a toothbrush. And I scrubbed the shaft with a little nylon scrubby just to help get the grease off quicker. I don't think you've seen a video like this before. I don't remember seeing one. So I hope that... For those of you that have the interest about how it works or who need to work on it or want to work on it, that this video will help you out. Yay. Okay, thanks for tuning in for whatever reason and I hope you'll come back and see some more videos about Trouble. Uh, Singer Model 401A Slantomatic. See you then. Take care now.